Imagine New York City with an extra 1,760 acres at its southern tip. This is the bold vision of Rutgers professor Jason Barr, who aims to combat rising sea levels while providing 180,000 new homes for 247,000 people. The new land, called New Manhattan, harks back to the island's original indigenous name. We are committed to releasing two videos a week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more visionary builds. This isn't the first expansion in Lower Manhattan's history. Approximately 29% of Manhattan, about 3,000 acres, exists due to land reclamation. The borders of New York City have changed many times, particularly in Lower Manhattan along the Hudson and East River shorelines. Lower Manhattan has expanded for various reasons, including incremental land encroachments by private entities, major municipal projects like the creation of Battery Park, efforts to encounter the exodus to Upper New York which harmed downtown businesses, economic incentives due to the high value of NYC real estate, and the need to enhance resilience against land erosion and climate change impacts. City leaders and engineers stress that a climate resiliency plan is crucial. Without action, much of Lower Manhattan could become unusable. A risk assessment found that 70% of Lower Manhattan's shoreline needs infrastructure improvements, including flood defenses extending into the East River. Areas between the Brooklyn Bridge and the Battery are particularly vulnerable. Could expanding Lower Manhattan also address the city's housing shortage? Absolutely. New York City faces a severe shortage of affordable housing, reshaping local demographics and culture in real time. Gentrification, while also criticized, also brings benefits like a more stable economy, reduced crime rates, and increased local revenues, which can fund public services and infrastructure improvements. New York City continues to attract immigrants, with over 45,000 migrants arriving in the past year alone. This influx strains the city's shelter system and sparks policy conflicts between New York and Washington. Expanding Lower Manhattan could provide much-needed housing and space for services and infrastructure to support economically disadvantaged residents. And the best part is, we already know this works. Consider this timeline that depicts the expansion and growth of Lower Manhattan in both size and worldwide dominance. In 1699, the old Dutch Wall was removed to make way for Wall Street. By 1825, Lower Manhattan had fewer than 170,000 people and lacked a regular police force or trained fire department. From 1869 to 1883, the Brooklyn Bridge, the first to use steel for cables, linked Manhattan and Brooklyn. In 1863, the British built dirt platforms at the southern tip of the island for military defense. They did it again in 1735, calling it the Copsey Battery. The remains of Fort George, also known as Amsterdam, were used to expand the battery in 1788. Castle Clinton was built on a small artificial island just off the shore. Construction began in 1808 and the fort was finished in 1811. Though they kept making changes through the 1820s, starting in 1855, the battery was mostly created by landfill using dirt from street widening projects in Lower Manhattan. This connected Castle Gardens Island to the mainland of Manhattan. The original shoreline is now roughly the modern park's eastern boundary at State Street. In the 1960s and 70s, landfill was used to create the 92 acres that make up Battery Park City. The first 24 acres were built on 1.2 million cubic yards of material from the construction of the original World Trade Center. More fill came from other projects like the New York City Water Tunnel and the dredging of Kill Van Cole. The East River waterfront has shifted over the years, moving to Water Street in 1730, then to Front Street in 1780, and finally to South Street by 1800. In 2013, then-Mayor Michael Bloomberg proposed a project called Seaport City, envisioned as a development similar to Battery Park City. This project aimed to revitalize the area around the South Street Seaport. Six years later, in 2019, Bloomberg's successor, Bill de Blasio, introduced a plan to address the increasing threats of climate change. This plan included creating up to 500 feet of new land extending from South Street to the East River, south of the Brooklyn Bridge. The objective was to protect South Street Seaport and the financial district from potential damage caused by rising sea levels and severe weather events. In 2021, the City of New York unveiled the Financial District Seaport, Fit a Seaport Resilience Plan. This ambitious initiative targets a 0.9-mile stretch of shoreline in Lower Manhattan, known for its complexity and vulnerability. This plan includes constructing flood walls, floodgates, pumps, and other advanced water management systems to handle tidal flows, flooding, and stormwater. The construction will extend between 90 and 200 feet into the East River, providing a robust protection against future climate-related threats. Gannisvort Peninsula, now part of the Meatpacking District at the northern end of Greenwich Village, was originally a spit of land extending into the Hudson River. The North Battery, an artillery installation, was built there between 1808 and 1811 and was connected to Hubert Street by a bridge and jetty. 
1812, Fort Gannisvort was completed between Gannisvort Street and West 12th Street. In 1837, landfill was used to create 13th Avenue. West Washington Market was established in 1887. New York City faced a unique challenge and addressed it by removing a block of land created by the 1837 landfill, which had extended Manhattan to 13th Avenue. This controversial move involved condemning many businesses, but the city could not condemn the West Washington Street Market, which remained as a landfill. The market eventually closed, and the dock was converted into a sanitation facility for loading garbage barges headed towards the Fresh Kills landfill. The only part of 13th Avenue that survived was behind this facility. In 2016, the city started demolishing the Department of Sanitation building to make way for a new public park. Little Island at Pier 55 is just to the north of this area. In 1911, Canadian-American engineer Kennard Thompson proposed an expansive plan called a really greater New York. His vision included expanding Lower Manhattan into Governor's Island, which was undergoing land reclamation to create New Manhattan. He also proposed creating new islands in Lower New York Bay and altering rivers. One of his goals was to stop the northward expansion, which he believed harmed downtown businesses. Over the years, Thompson refined his idea and formed the Manhattan Extension Corporation in 1921, supported by prominent figures like former judge and presidential candidate Alton B. Parker and artist Walter Russell. Thompson continued to advocate for his vision throughout his life. A century later, Vishan Chakbarati, a professor at Columbia's University Center for Urban Real Estate, proposed a similar idea. He suggested using landfill to connect Lower Manhattan and Governor's Island, creating a new neighborhood called Lolo, Lower Lower Manhattan. While this proposal highlighted benefits, it also faced challenges such as high costs, strict regulations on building with landfill, and potential environmental impacts. In 2015, author John Methven revisited the proposal in the all, humorously dubbing the new borough Frankenborough. In 2022, Rutgers University urban economist Jason Barr proposed the new Manhattan Project, continuing the vision of expanding Manhattan. However, this idea faced criticism, particularly from Willie Blackmore and Curbed, who raised environmental concerns about the proposal. New York City's survival and growth hinge on how well its 520-mile coastline is protected. In the past, rapid port development dramatically changed the coastline's topography, with dredging to make way for bulkheads and piers to facilitate shipping. Much of the city's coastline lacks purpose-built defenses against high tides or storm surges. Instead, there are sandy beaches used for recreation that have been supplemented with sand to replace erosion losses. Until recently, the city's natural coastal areas and wetlands have been underutilized, failing to provide crucial protection where inland buffers and other structures could have played a significant role in strengthening the coastline. Hurricane Sandy struck the battery in Lower Manhattan, generating a massive surge that created a storm tide over 14 feet above mean lower low water. The surge overwhelmed beaches, boardwalks, and bulkheads, eventually flooding the streets of Lower Manhattan. Projections indicate that such scenarios will become more frequent and intense as climate change produces more erratic and unpredictable weather. The Manhattan Island Extension Project aims to provide near- and long-term solutions to enhance the area's climate resilience. The goal is to fortify the coastline, reducing the hazards posed by climate change and land exposure in Lower Manhattan by the 2050s and 2100. Tools being discussed for this project are deployable protection, flip-up barriers, parallel stormwater system, raised edge, sea level rise protection, elevated esplanade, raised edge, surge protection in some areas, seepage barrier. The project's goal is to prevent floodwaters from coming directly inland from the ocean, reduce water surges over beaches and bulkheads, and prevent flooding of neighborhoods and critical infrastructure such as tunnels. This initiative, aside from saving New York City, aims to provide robust protection against future climate-related threats. If the plan to significantly increase land in Lower Manhattan moves forward, the next crucial question is how best to utilize this new space. It'll likely require voter and legislative support to ensure some of this land is allocated for low- to medium-income housing and multi-use spaces for the homeless and migrant population. Expensive housing prices in large metropolitan areas are not just a New York City issue. Cities like San Francisco, Seattle, Boston, and D.C. also face affordable housing shortages due to changing urban economics. From millennials to Zoomers, many professionals prefer urban lifestyles over suburban living, at least until they start families. Refurbished brownstones, new condos, townhomes, and luxury apartments are prevalent in the lower Manhattan real estate market, providing a significant economic boost through dining, retail, sports, and entertainment industries. However, it's clear that more affordable living spaces are needed, even if not directly in downtown areas, at least within city limits. 
This would allow people to stay close to employment and city amenities. If the plans for 1,760 acres of reclaimed land materialize, providing 180,000 new homes for 247,000 people, it'd be a missed opportunity if affordable housing isn't included. It's exciting to think that the solution to harden NYC's coastal land could also address the city's overcrowded and expensive housing market. The looming threat of climate change is upon us, but so is the challenge of housing a growing population critical to NYC's survival. Everything that makes New York City special is based on the wide diversity of its population, and it's essential that all residents continue to enjoy the Big Apple. We are committed to releasing two videos a week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more visionary builds.